Good morning. Morning, everyone. Hello, everybody. It sounds a bit like we're coming from under the sea there with that audio. Does it? Does it sound like, okay, well, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm Chris Morrison. And I'm Jane Secker. And um, we're your hosts today for Copyright and Online Learning at a Time are. of Uncertainty, the 47th webinar, of, which is good going, isn't it? It's not bad, yes. Yes, we're yeah, moving so from, from crisis to uncertainty, maybe into a period yeah. of transition. We might. We did use the transition word, didn't we? So we did. maybe we'll, 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 we'll do a bit of rebranding later. But yeah. just to say we are co-chairs of the Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group of ALT, the Association for Learning Technology. I work at the uh, University of Kent, Jane works at City University of London, um, and we also do loads of stuff around copyright at copyrightliteracy.org for those of you um, that are new to this. But I think looking at the participant list, most people are old timers. But any, if you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is the place to be if you're interested in copyright and online learning. Absolutely. So what have we got lined up today, Chris? Come on, take us through. Uh, we got some good copyright news, uh, yeah. some interesting stuff. There always does seem to be stuff to talk about. Always lots of events, so we're, we're going to be chatting about that. Yeah. Uh, oh, it just says confessions of a learning technologist. That's incorrect. I did not update the slide. Today's <laughs> actually about fair dealing week, isn't it? Are we going to so, get Sandy uh, and Greg to do some confessions of a learning technologist? Yeah, and it says someone from PLE. So this <laughs> is the one slide that we didn't particularly scrutinise particularly carefully <laughs> quick. so uh, let's move on let's move on very quickly it's just let's go Since straight to last we last met. Met. yeah so you you pick you kick this one off all uh, right yes okay so um i've i've taken to outdoor swimming um I, I was swimming last night um it yeah it was a bit mad actually there were leaves blowing around all over the place um i apparently the water was 21 degrees um but i i'm not convinced it was 21 degrees it was the coldest yet um, and I don't have a wetsuit. Um, and yeah, it's, it's absolutely great fun, actually. This is, uh, I'm delighted that the pool near me has remained open in the winter. And um, I have to say, I feel exhilarated at it. But Chris, kind of always one to have to outdo me. Yes, and I can see Sam. Um, yes, yeah, 6.5. He's in the same, in the same in the area as me. So a dream, dream of 21 degrees centigrade. Uh, I, the air temperature was eight degrees when I got into the River Way, I think it is in Guildford a couple of weeks ago. So that's me. I think it was probably about, yeah, eight, maybe uh, around that. It was pretty That face didn't get any better, did it, either? I've seen a whole series of photos and, and basically yeah. you've just got that face on the whole time. Yeah, the rest of the photos are definitely not safe for work. I mean, nothing particularly bad, but really I didn't want to just be <laughs> pictures of me bathing. But anyway, that is the face really that you need. <laughs> <laughs> okay um uh it, it we'll is outdoor swimming that. wild swimming is brilliant um and uh if you haven't tried all the science shows that the health benefits are marvelous as well as yeah all that stuff so sam i think we might need to have a special presentation yeah i think so i think yeah, i think sam can swimming. come and join us and talk a bit about um some of her you, you do like canoeing and kayaking don't you sam as well all sorts of stuff yeah Right, let's okay. move on, Chris. Let's, Let, yeah, let's, let's get, let's get right. But Sam, come Sorry, and join us. Yeah, yeah. for learning technologist underwater or in the water. Oh, t-shirt ordered. Okay, so Chris. So we have the archive here. Uh, and we said this last time we need to update because now we are actually putting all these videos on YouTube. So you will be able to see them on YouTube as well. We need to update that slide. Perhaps you can make a note for us to do that. Um, at some point, Jane, that would be good. Um, uh, so yeah, that's where the archive is. Um, and let's move on to... So some some, good news coming up today. Some people's favorite jingle. Some people's favorite jingle, there we go. Yeah. Um, just to, uh, maybe some of you will have seen this on the list, uh, List Coffee Seek. So Deborah Ferns, who is joining us today. Congratulations, Deborah, uh, on your new role, uh, Copyright and Licensing Compliance Manager at Strathclyde. Um, excellent um, and really good that you've uh, you've got this vacancy out there um, to, to a new post. And I just think it's fantastic that we're seeing universities continuing to invest in 
copyright support, dedicated people working in this area. Um, and so that's going to be a really, really good opportunity. And I'm sure Absolutely. those um, here with today will be interested in, in looking at that. Um, so Deborah, I know you're going to talk a bit later uh, about the event that's coming up, the Skirl event, if you are, in fact are here and listening in. Uh, so perhaps you know later on, if you want to say anything about that, we can hand over to you then. Uh, but I'm looking, is Deborah actually on the call at the moment? Yeah, Deborah's here. She's, I've made yeah, she is. Don't okay. worry. Come on, good, I'm good. all over. So I'm looking in the long list. I apologise. Let's move on to the next item then. Yes. So we've had a busy week. Um, we did um, what are called the digitally enhanced webinars. I didn't feel very digitally enhanced. I was just in teams. But um, your colleagues um, in the uh, online learning team at Kent did an absolutely fantastic series of, or they are doing a fantastic series of webinars. There was over 300 people there, Chris. I know. There? It, was, it was crazy. Phil Anthony, my colleague, learning technologist of the year 2021, no doubt, uh, it should be said, um, has been hosting these uh, kind of for the same sort of time period that we have. But yeah, it's hugely popular, really, really brilliant presentations. They allowed us to come in and do 15 minutes of chaos, which was very enjoyable. Um, mm. But yeah, no, it, it, was, it was really good to be part of it. Um, yeah, and so, so that was our presentation. Yep, yep. And if you're interested, there's the recording that we of our bit isn't quite up yet. But if you go to the YouTube channel, um, hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell to never miss another video. Uh, I'm sure uh, they will be very, uh, well, you would find it very interesting if you are wanting to find out about teaching um, with technology, digital technology and how it all works. And I think they should. And I've, I've put up, I've put up our slide. They, 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 they need to invite you back to talk about your module in more depth. I've, I've laid some fairly not very subtle hints. Uh, Thank but you. No, it's a really Thank good you. You're very kind. You're very kind. Um, yes, so our slides are available as well, if anybody wants to have a look at what we were talking about, but they will look quite familiar to many of you, I'm sure. Um, okay, next up, um, shall I do this one? Yes, you do this one. Yeah, so um, I um, uh, was uh, I, I was interested, I follow Corey Doctorow, um, the sort of writer, he spoke, um, he did a keynote a couple of years ago actually at a SILIC conference, um, and he is very interested um, in sort of issues related to copyright information um, and, uh, and sort of digital technology. And um, I know we had a closed session um, last year about um, image um, and uh, copyright sort of trolling and image reuse and Creative Commons. And we've been doing some work in this area. Um, and actually, I, I was spotted um, on um, his, he was tweeting about the fact that he's just written a piece on Medium. I've just popped a link into that, um, which is an open letter to the CEO of Pixie, who uh, were one of the picture agencies that I think some of us might have had um, some dealings with, where we might be getting these um, demands for payment. So uh, Corey actually got um, a, a couple of these himself. So it's based on his experience and he wrote an open letter um, to the CEO of Pixie. I would suggest you have a, have a look at it. It's very, very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, we are still working in this area, aren't we, as well? Um, we're looking to, to put out, um, hopefully, um, a blog post about this fairly soon. Yeah, yeah. Some sort, some sort of guidance about things to think about, at the very least. Um, we had one recently at Kent. It wasn't a Pixie claim, but it was one of these types of claims. We went back to the lecturer and said, what happened here? Where did, what, did you get permission? It's like, yeah, I got it from Pixabay. And then we said, we went back to the to this this agency that contacted us and said, well, it's on Pixabay. And they went, oh, yeah, so it is. OK, no worries. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. the, some of the level of, and we talked about this in the past, the, of, of due diligence that they are actually doing. Always the first thing is to question whether they actually have the right to be contacting you in the first place. Absolutely. But it is he does also pick up the point about people using the Creative Commons 2.0 licenses and deliberately seeding sites like Flickr with uh, photos mm -hmm. that they know people are going to want to use and then kind of chasing them up when they um, make very, very small mistakes with the way they might have attributed the image. So yeah. there's quite a lot in that piece about it. Um, yeah, definitely recommend that for a, a, an interesting read um, and, and something to think about if your university has had um, any of these uh, threatening letters. 
from similar companies. So the next thing we're getting very excited about this conference. We were supposed to keynote this in 2020, weren't we? That was the initial we plan. Were. And then 2021. But now actually playful learning is taking place in July of 2022, barring any other unforeseen events. Um, but we're really, really excited about this whole area of, of playfulness. And, and you, as you know, uh, Jane and I like playing games um, about copyright. Um, and being playful, but we have actually just written an article which is due to feature in um, an associated journal um, about our approach and how what you know, what it means around copyright. So we're going to be exploring some of those in this presentation. Um, and the call for papers is still out, isn't it? For anyone else involved? It is. In it it closes project. today. It does close today. So mm -hmm. it's actually um, it, it's it, it's not papers as such. So they're looking for all sorts of types of uh, like a demo of a game if you've got a game um, or you know it's any anything like really different as well. There's they're sort of suggesting you might want to do something where you take people outside on a walk or all sorts of exciting ideas. I think it's just 300 words the abstracts you've got to put in um, of what your idea is. So um, yeah, sounds it, it's it, it's definitely um, going to be a fun event, and yeah, we're looking forward to it. We are indeed. Um, okay, do you want to do the final uh, item here while I queue up the thing that we're going to do next? Yeah. So last item, um, I don't know if uh, people who are Silic members may well have uh, seen the announcement about the uh, Silic Copyright Conference. Um, it's uh, it's actually happening um, online this year, um, so not a face-to-face -face event on the 18th of May. There's a feature if you are a CILIC member in Information Professional telling you a bit more about the event. Um, I've just popped a link in um, as well where you can find out more and uh, register. So, um, And James is joining us today, and I know James is going to be speaking at the conference, but also um, Professor Tanya Applin, who was Chris's uh, supervisor when he was doing his master's. So um, lots of, yeah, lots of great speakers lined up there um, and uh, check that out. Yes, So, absolutely. So shall we, we move on? Are we ready for today's exciting uh, I think topic? we might be, yes. Ah, so yes. some of you may have seen this. So what I'm gonna do now, seamless, a seamless uh, transition. I say seamless because I'm talking in order to pad it out. Um, Will this work? Here we go. We're going to play you the trailer. Hey, we've hey. got a guest. We've spotlighted a guest. We Who's our guest? Our, our, Hi, guest our guest today, uh, I think he'll be known to some of our, our regulars at our webinar series. It's Carl K. Courtney, who is the Harvard Copyright Advisor. He's got his bow tie on, looking fabulous today. Kyle, why have you joined us? What are we chatting about? Oh, well, well, I'm excited because uh, Fair Use, Fair Dealing Week is coming up and the last uh, full week in February. And I, I think it's a great example of successful grassroots efforts organizing by cultural institutions, including libraries, archives and museums. Wow, that sounds like fun. So how yeah. can people find out more about this? Is there a website or something or do they have to, you know, read it in a book? Uh, no, they can go to fairuseweek.org um, <laughs> and that will highlight all the number of ways in which you can celebrate Fair Use Fair Dealing Week, uh, which is a uh, participation welcomed. Excellent. Uh, I, I think there is an event coming up, Chris, as well, isn't there, that we might be um, a little bit involved in? Uh, we are, yeah. So just to say for the first time, we are organizing um, a whole week's worth of events in the UK. And it's not to celebrate fair use, it's to celebrate fair dealing and its relationship to fair use. So we're reaching across the pond and forging links with our colonial cousins. Um, so <laughs> yes, uh, we will be having a launch event and we will be welcoming Kyle to join us to explain a bit more about fair use and fair dealing and have a bit of a discussion. So we're looking forward to having you um, on Monday the 21st of February as part of the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies webinar. Excellent. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for joining us. And we hope that we see some of our regulars at the webinar um, coming along during Fair, U Fair Use, Fair Dealing Week. Yeah. Great. Cheers, Looking bye. Looking forward to it, bye. <laughs> Hello.
so there we are wow, yes, that, was Kevin, amazing. that was a recording that's not the real kyle that's kyle a few days ago but he is uh, Oh, I've suddenly got an advert for Les Mills Puss coming through on the other screen. <laughs> right, stop, stop, okay. Stop. We, we can't see it, we don't are, worry. We, we are very, very excited about Fair Dealing Week coming, Fair Use Fair Dealing Week coming to the UK uh, for the first time, and that we've managed to get Kyle's involvement, and that's really what we're going to be talking about um, now, isn't it? I will get the slides back up so we can yeah. talk about yeah, that yeah. initial event. We, is that where we, we're going to start, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I can just uh, very, very briefly, I mean, uh, the Fair Use Week, I think, has run for probably about three or four years. Um, it started, uh, Carl started this um, in the US. Um, obviously, fair use is not the same as fair dealing, but the Canadians joined in quite quickly. And um, so um, that's why they kind of brand it fair use and fair dealing week, because obviously Canada has the same uh, legal tradition as us. So they have the concept of fair dealing in their law. Um, but to our knowledge, there has not been a fair dealing week in the UK um, prior to, to what's happening next week and um we're excited about it we're hoping that it might grow in future years it might become something like open access week and um yeah we really hope to see you at the kickoff off event um that we're at. really delighted that the institute of advanced legal studies um is going to be hosting aren't we chris so ah oh, we are you know, I was about yeah, to so that. there's the link yeah, we, so we, we really on the event uh on monday evening at six o'clock chris has just popped the link in um, mm -hmm. But I think we're going to hand over, aren't we, to um, Sandy, who's from um, ILAS. Oh, maybe... uh, yes, we are going to hand over to Sandy. Yeah, yeah. Say a so... few words um, about that event. So, Sandy, are you with us? I am. I am. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm you here. Can, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I work for IELTS, the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Uh, which is, um, I've only been there a short while, joined mid pandemic. So um, that was interesting. But it is one of the largest legal research libraries, apparently in the world, apparently, um, as I just realized. Um, not that many people know about us, um, but we're part of the University of London, the School of Advanced Studies, but we are the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Um, based at Russell Square, Russell Square, if anybody wants to pop in, but it is actually you can't, sorry, it's only a postgraduate library, unless unless you mention my name and I'll give you a talk. Um, but Jane and Chris have asked me just to explain briefly how this connection came about. Um, so I work with the library and I also work with the University of London Press. We produce open access books. And one of my colleagues asked me about using a quotation in one of the books and he mentioned fair use. And I thought I should know this. So I kind of went away and I looked in the library and I got a bit confused and thought, well, I'm sure I know this. I know what this is about. I then got confused between fair use, fair dealing. I then realized things had changed in 2014. I then sort of panicked a bit and then couldn't find the answer in the world's largest legal resource library. So what do you do? You contact Jane and Chris. So that was the connection there. So um, I'd met Jane and Chris a long, long time ago at a copyright conference in Poland where I was very impressed because I played their game and I, I won some quality street chocolates. And um, that's, that's, a, that's always a, a, a nice thing when you win a prize. So I'd remember, but it worked, it worked. So anyway, Jane and Chris came to my aid, um, pointed me in the right direction and my colleague was quite happy with the result. I then sort of tried to read up again on, on what everything's, everything you're doing, um, Chris and Jane. And um, I realized there's a whole world out there that I didn't know about. I've always worked with lawyers. I've always told lawyers not to breach copyright. They very often ignore that advice. Um, and then I realized that now I'm working for an, um, an academic institution, there's a whole new angle of, of copyright that students need. So I'm still quite new to that. But then I realized that everybody needs to know a bit more about this. Jane mentioned the fair dealing, the fair use conference, the fair use week. And I think Jane then came up with the, Jane and Chris came up with the idea of why not do it in the UK? And I thought that's a good idea. And then I rather rashly said, maybe we can, maybe we can help. Um, at the time, it seemed like a good idea. It is a good idea. We are really happy to be able to to hold the launch event, but 
I'm just really pleased that I'm not presenting or speaking or trying to explain fair use and fair dealing to anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sandy, I, I give it six months, and I reckon you'll 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 be you'll you'll be very confident in explaining it. <laughs> anyway, so that that's it really. Um, and we're hoping if you you know already signed up, you can still sign up for the webinar on Monday. I think yeah, it will be recorded, so it will be available at uh, a later stage. Um, Fantastic. No, that's, that's absolutely, it. that's brilliant. That's really good. We we also just, it is uh, worth saying, I think there was a point last year in the autumn where we were really hoping we were actually going to hold this event, weren't we, at, at Russell Square in person, and we were going to be able to invite people to come and also potentially have people joining us online. We yeah. took the decision just before Christmas um, with the way things were with Omicron, that it really wasn't looking good to have a face-to-face -face event. But what I really hope is maybe it might be the start of a, a beautiful partnership where we could have some more copyright events at the world's largest legal library. Uh, yes. It sounds yeah. like no, that no. needs to happen. Perhaps with all the copyright books out as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Thank all you right, very thanks. much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. And just to say, yeah, I, I put a note in there that I did. I did uh, go to the uh, aisles when I was doing my MA, and it was very, very useful because it does have the stuff you need, the stuff that wasn't in the Kent Library and and, and wasn't available online. Um, so it, it, the power of libraries and specialist libraries, right there. Um, Absolutely. And I think the thing for me about this event that's going to be really exciting is. And um, clearly we're kind of kicking it off. We're explaining what this week is all about. But then we also wanted something that actually had quite a lot of substance to it. And the fact that we've got um, Emily Hudson talking about the, the project that she and Tanya Aplin have been working on in terms of quotation norms um, is going to be really interesting. Some of you have seen uh, Emily talk about that before, but I think in this context, she'll have more time. Uh, the work they've done is more advanced and we'll be able to be putting it in the context of how do we raise awareness of this in different communities and how does fair dealing actually support all those different communities it's not as if it's something that only librarians or copyright users make use of it's actually something which is there in the whole system for everyone to take advantage mm. of um mm. so I th and, I'm, I'm, and it's it's great we've got kyle coming i think isn't it as well chris mm. uh, he's going to yes. be tuning in i think it's lunch time for him over in boston Yes. And uh, it's obviously a busy week for him um, because he's running a whole host of events for Fair Use Week. Um, but um, it, yeah, do I do recommend having a look at the, the website if you haven't um, seen the kinds of things that loads of American um, libraries put on during that week. Because it, it really is, um, I think, showing us what we could be doing to to, to sort of further, you know, explain how how uh, copyright works to our users. So I've just moved on to the next event uh, and I uh, am going to hand over to Deborah, Deborah Ferns, who now he, so Deborah's going to be talking about Debbie. I'm aware that in the last one we've actually got Kyle and Carl. So uh, we've potentially got some confusion there with names. But Deborah, if you're there, um, are you able to talk to us about the Skirl event that you've organised? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Can yeah, you see me? You are. Yes, we, can, yes. we definitely. We can't see you, but no, yes. I can see. Yeah, I can see yeah, you. Can, You're kind of I flashing on and off. <laughs> yeah, I put my camera on, so hopefully you can you can all see me. So, um, uh, Skirl have organised a fair fair dealing coffee morning on um the Thursday the twenty fourth of February um from ten till eleven. So we're really delighted to welcome Debbie McDonald, who's the Intellectual Property Manager at the British Council. Um, Debbie has kindly agreed to deliver a 20 to 25 minute presentation around the challenges of using UK copyright exceptions outside the UK, along with assessing the associated risk and best practice. Um, this will be followed by a Q&A, along with further discussion um, around fair dealing and the UK copyright exceptions with panel members and attendees. So uh, you can sign up for that event at the, the Skirl um, website. Um, and when registering for the event, you'll be sent a link with a short MS form prior to the event starting. So this form will allow you to highlight any circumstances where you've used copyright exceptions and any discussion points that you'd like to raise. 
Now, it's optional to provide your name, but if you do decide to provide your name, or um, you can, and just particularly if you want to discuss these topics more at the event. Um, so we're hoping people will make use of the form because it will give us a basis for discussions and give a good opportunity to discuss fear dealing in an open and safe environment. Um, the session's intended to be informal and the recording that we're making will only be used for note taking. This is really to encourage open discussion between participants on their experience of using fair dealing or if you have any questions around um, using the legal framework. Um, hopefully, we're hoping that the output from the event will be a, a blog entry which will capture the themes of the discussion. Um, so that's really the base of the event and I'd encourage people to, to sign up. Thank you very much, Deborah. I mean, it's it's going to be a really, really valuable one. This we we've heard Debbie speak um, at these events before. She's she's part of our gang. Uh, she's got a really interesting perspective uh, because of that role at the British Council, dealing with uh, or, or working with people right across the world. And it's a question that we get asked all the time, isn't it, in the copyright world? Well, how does it work if I'm in the UK and I'm putting something on the internet, and then people are accessing it all around the world, and you're kind of Sometimes when you think, right, okay, they're expecting uh, a couple of sentences, aren't they? That's going to explain the whole thing. And then you have to say, well, here we go. But having said that, um, Debbie is the person to, to to talk us through that and and to answer the questions and work through things in practice. So so I think it's just fantastic that you've, you've got her lined up to do it. Um, and really great to see this girl continuing to put together really, really great events that are really, you know, delivering an awful lot of... Um, helpful advice and information to people. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Deborah, did you want to say anything about your uh, a plug for your, your vacancy in your team to come work with you at all? <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I'm taking on the the, the manager role um, at, at Strathclyde um, from the start of April. So we have a vacancy for a cop copyright and licensing um, That's fantastic officer. news. Yeah. So, um, Really, I would encourage anyone with experience of copyright law to apply. It's it's quite a varied role, dealing with all kinds of copyright inquiries and delivering training to staff and students and developing our guidance and training materials. So I, I've been at Strathclyde for three and a half years and I'm, I've enjoyed working there, hence staying on in this promoted role. So it would really be great if we get lots of applicants. Excellent, excellent, yes. Yeah, and also yeah. just to add to that, um, Deborah, in your background and having worked for Just Legal, um, a, a really fantastic person to work with. If for anyone that's lucky enough to get that role and to to to, to be able to, to sort of build that capacity within your university and then work across the sector, so um, it's it's really great news, as I said before. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Okay. okay let's well. go back. Uh, so we have I'm, another I'm, event as well, don't we? We, we have another we event have another going event. on um, um, during Fair Use Week. I am Fair just week. selecting Fair Fair Use Fair Dealing Week. That's not going to get confusing or annoying at all, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so we have this event happening um, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. to 6:30. Creative reuse at Kent at the University of Kent. So I've got colleagues of mine uh, joining me to talk through what happens, what has happened in practice at the University of Kent. Uh, so we've got Professor Richard Rees is going to kick us off. He's the chair of our copyright steering group. Um, he's been very involved in copyright matters. He was at Manchester before he came to Kent. So he kind of slightly got <laughs> lumbered with the role of like, but actually he is really interested in it and has been really strongly supportive of the work we've been doing. Uh, Dr. Richard Misek, who's the next face next to, to, to Richard R. He is a, um, documentary filmmaker as well as a senior lecturer in film and media studies at the university um so jane you can drop in the chat can you the copyright waffle we did with richard um that's a really I fascinating can, one yes yes because he yes. Uses, he's going to talk to us all about reuse he reuses other people's content in his own films all the time and in fact has a real interest in copyright law and how it acts as sometimes a barrier to creativity, what I I interesting ways um, and provocations as well, sometimes that he, he does towards copyright law in his work. Um, so that's gonna be fantastic to hear from him. Uh, Dr. Alex Cavacci uh, is 
uh, a lecturer in uh, digital arts and specialism in virtual reality. So I've been doing some teaching, uh, guest lecturing with her students to use the copyright card game when we teach with Alex. So she's going to be talking to us about that teaching. How do they uh, prepare students for futures uh, digital, uh, uh, digital artistic and similar uh, innovative jobs in, in the industry and how do they get their heads around intellectual property and how do we support them at the university uh, and then last but not least on the bill is dr ben marsh of the marsh family the internet sensations who came shot to uh, fame in the first lockdown with their parody versions of songs to keep our, all our spirits up um, and uh, Jane and I did a another Copyright Waffle podcast interview with Ben last year. Um, so what we're doing here is we're basically following up on that conversation. What's the latest? What's happened? Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see how his experiences with relying on fair dealing or perhaps not being able to rely on fair dealing because of the, the realities of how YouTube operate and how the platforms operate. Um, but also seeing his development from having been someone who was who was a, a remixer and parodist is now someone who's actually an established content creator and has other people wanting to reuse his work. Um, so that's going to be a, a fascinating insight from him. Um, and we would hope there will be some element of musical uh, something or other, but we'll have to wait and see for the day to see how that all pans out. But I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that session. And there's the, um, the slide here is, uh, this is me and Jane talking to Ben. So that's the plug uh, for that. And he's bit. such a nice guy as well, isn't he? He's a lovely guy. Oh, he's, he's, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's really great. He's, 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 he's a lovely guy. He's a very, um, I mean, his, Eminent his historian. background, he's a, he's a historian. So, you know, mm. you and him have got lots of history nerding. That Absolutely. You Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there's just there is one other event that's happening um, uh, during Fair Dealing Week um, that is being organised primarily for universities who are in uh, the sort of London area. Um, it's being put on by the Bloomsbury Learning Exchange, so there's not actually um, a booking link um, for that. If you do want to go along, I've just popped the details um, in the chat. You need to send an email to uh, Sarah Sherman, who um, is uh, the manager of the Blo Bloomsbury Learning Exchange. But we're going to be having a panel discussion um, that is also, um, I believe, on Thursday, the 24th of February um, in the afternoon. So it's the same day as the Skull event, but it's it's later in the afternoon. Chris and I are going to be joining a panel. Um, I believe that uh, Sam Ahern, who's with us from UCL, will also be um, joining us and uh, Stephen Penton, copyright librarian at City University. So we should have, be having a lively discussion um, and it, it's very informal, open um, to anyone who wants to come along. So if you're not part of the Bloomsbury Learning Exchange and you are interested, if you just drop a, an email to Sarah Sherman, um, and she will make sure you get an invite to that. So I think that's it of all our events, isn't it? I think that's the events. Is there an event we've forgotten about? Is someone sitting there thinking, hang on, I've done all this work and I told you all about it and you left me off the list. Is there anyone or have we have we fully covered everything that we know that's happening? Um, if anybody does at this point want to put on an event, it's probably a bit late, but feel free because it's 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 you just Put whatever it is you're doing, even if it's not an event, if it's just something you're doing, something that you're planning on doing and raising awareness in your institution, you can go to the fairuseweek.org website and you can register it there. And I think the more we can do to demonstrate that um, this is an area we are, we are all behind, I think the, the, the more we get some critical mass to raise awareness. Yeah, so and just a reminder as well, if, if you do want a link that's got um, all the events that we've just talked about a moment ago, um, we did a blog post about that um, just earlier this week. And so if you go to the Get Set for Fair Dealing Week, you will find the booking links for all the different events, at, uh, Institute of Advanced Legal Studies at University of Kent, uh, the Skirl event and the, the BLE event. So has anyone got any, we've got a bit of time, has anyone got any questions, anything um, that they'd like to ask about um, either the events or about, um, you know, some of the challenges of promoting fair dealing? Just 
um, wondering. Yeah, because whether... I was I was going to say if if you can pr put those links as wide as you can in your own networks. Uh, yes, but is there any anything anyone wanted to comment on about their experiences of trying to raise awareness? Um, of this. I know sometimes copyright isn't the easiest topic to get on the agenda. I've been very careful not to use copyright as the number one kind of headline thing when advertising our event at Kent. Uh, and to talk about creative reuse as being and how we do creative teaching um, and research and engagement. If no one's got anything to to add, we could we can move on. But we do have it. We're, we're, we're doing very well for time today. We are. Um, we are. Yeah. Um, so Caroline, you've just had a question from a student asking if they can rely on fair use for images in their thesis. So is that the it's wording some... they use specifically as well, Caroline? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's something I want to pick up on the panel discussion, actually. When I, uh, I, I've asked this question, we've had discussions about this in the past, you know, you can't use fair use when you're not under American law because fair use is an American concept. But sometimes we find ourselves going through certain steps. We do think about fair dealing, and of course we do that all the time. But when you think about it in that global context, and again, this will be interesting to see if Debbie's got some thoughts on this, because of the power of American tech companies and publishing companies, sometimes it's kind of, it's useful to have an awareness of fair use in the back of your mind even when you're thinking through a fair dealing question. I'm going to pose that question to Emily and Kyle and see what their thoughts are about that. You know, because strictly speaking, no, of course you don't apply fair use if you're talking about a UK uh, based uh, author in a UK based institution, putting something in a primarily UK based <laughs> repository or, or whatever. But mm, fair use has quite a lot of influence, I think, on way people think about things. So. That's a thought that's in my mind. It's, Jane, it's, also, it, it's also one of the things I'm thinking about, Chris, is whether, um, you know, somebody comes to you with uh, a question like that. Is this a kind of, you know, teachable moment? Is it the time they, they kind of want to know whether they can put the image in their thesis? in some ways and they probably heard about the concept of fair use so you know do you use it as an opportunity to kind of explain to them well of course fair use doesn't apply in the uk and but we have a similar concept and it's called fair dealing and you know i mean it, it, in essence it, it largely does do quite a similar thing so there, there probably is a way they can put an image um in their thesis and rely on a copyright exception but it's it's just how far you you kind of labor the point for you know it, i would say you know you you kind of you probably should go there and say well i need, just need to explain that fair use is an american concept it doesn't apply in the uk but we do have something similar um but you know i, I think at that point you, what you don't want to do is floor them with a sort of, you know, I'm now going to go into the huge amount of detail about the difference between US and UK law. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I think I would be inclined to say something, Caroline, to obviously explain um, that fair use is an American concept, but, you know, that kind of in, in answer to their question about can they do this? Yes, they probably can under you know an exception such as quotation or illustration for instruction and um you know it, it, and see how it goes if it's a student that's working in a kind of creative area then they may want to know more about how copyright works they may that may be all they want to know though but you know for, for some i think some students you know it might kind of intrigue them they might say oh i hadn't really realized about this that's a much more helpful answer than the one I gave. I think it was a bit wafty and, and yeah, not a full <laughs> essay on the topic. <laughs> well, you, um, were, you were preoccupied with your bread. We could see what you were up. You to. could we see could me see operate. I here we go. That's what it's looking like. It's looking. It's looking doughy. It, it's doughy. It's mm. beginning of its bulk fermentation process. So very nice. Um, so Simon's got an event. Simon, you've got your event at the top of the list. You say um, at UWE. Do you want to do you want to come on and tell us a bit about what what you're up to?
Ah, oh. right. no worries. <laughs> um, okay. Leap, leap in the dark. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, it's it, when you're trying something new, not quite sure how it's going to go. And I think we, we said at the beginning of this, we want to try to get the ball rolling, but we don't need to actually be um, involved in all the events. Um, and it appears now that we are involved in most of them, uh, which is great, actually. We're really, really pleased. Only this year. Only, only, only for, this year. Uh, yeah. But I think, yeah. I think yeah. if we can just see what happens here, I think what we've got here is quality uh, rather than quantity. I mean, I think we've got some really great things. So I think that's, that's going to be really good. Um, yes. Okay. okay. So, so should we get the slides up? We've let's got, go. Um, into, we're into the final straight now, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I am on my way to talking about what's coming up in future webinars. Yeah. So, so we've got we've got some really good webinars lined up, haven't we? The next slide. <laughs> next Roxanne, one in March. Roxanne and Eleanor from University of Arts London. This is going to be brilliant. Roxanne is excellent, um, and she is. Um, she used to be at the the V and A. Uh, and then moved to University of the Arts London in this role, which is working with design students, art students, and uh, talking to them about intellectual property and helping them understand how it impacts on their careers, uh, whilst also um, looking at the, the, some of the, the, the bigger meatier questions about uh, what it means. Uh, so that's going to be a, a fantastic session. Absolutely. Uh, copyright people's journeys that's a well funny way of putting it chris it's but anyway <laughs> we we did a really popular session um last year where we had three copyright specialists we had um kate vasili we had simon cox and we had um uh hannah pyman talk about um becoming a copyright specialist and uh we would like to put out a call um early on um for other speakers who might want to come and join the session on the 15th of April and maybe tell their story. And it is about becoming, it is a journey. So it isn't about being a copyright specialist. So whatever kind of level you feel like your knowledge is at, we really like to hear from you. Um, we have one speaker, I think, already who's confirmed that they are happy to do it, um, who is very new to the copyright world. Um, right. But we well, co we're confirmed, or, or, or we're, we're in discussions at the moment. But thinking yes. about it, okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying anymore. Okay. Good, I'm not, good. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag. Um, uh, but um, yeah, if anyone else um, feels the 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 urge to tell their story, um, and it can be as um, you know uh, as as much or as little about copyright as you want. So if you remember Kate's um, journey into copyright, it was uh, it was a fantastic kind of rundown of some of her career, wasn't it? And uh, how she ended up uh, accidentally almost becoming Middlesex uh, copyright advisor. And Hannah and Simon as well. It was really good to hear from all three of them. So we're looking forward to that one. And that's going to be a regular feature. We just think this is this is kind of what we want to be doing is is Definitely. To, get a, to know each other a bit better. How did we get here and, and, and how much the kind of diverse perspectives all help us if we if we you know, come from different backgrounds. So. That's great. Um, we're still waiting for the IPO to confirm, aren't we? I think. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to be talking got, in May. We're hoping got about quite their... a big, big job to do putting together all the stuff with this framework. So we're kind of waiting for them. Uh, but yeah. they have they have agreed they will come and talk to us. Uh, and maybe there'll be license updates. As ever, if you have any topics that you want to discuss, uh, please let us know. Um, we're not fully booked up. We do have a schedule for the year that we want to make sure we've, we've kind of got people lined up. Um, so there we are. Um, just to say, um, Roxanne um, has got. Are you going to piece... play the song when she comes on? Because she knows she no. really likes people. No, doing that. We, we've we've had that discussion. I don't think we're going to do that. Although I did, I was going to play bass song to it, wasn't I? That's the thing. Anyway, that's, that's. But this is this is um, the piece that that Roxanne wrote about what she's doing in this area. So you might want to read that. But of course, if you tune in next month, you'll get the full thing directly from her and Eleanor that she's she's been working with. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that leaves okay. us a bit of time for... We've got something a bit special now, haven't we? we? Have. You know we that have. we have this. You know that we have the one last thing as a standing agenda item. Now, we've got to put a bit of effort into it this time around. So please, 
don't leave now and in fact if you just give me a moment i will eventually get myself sorted to swap over <laughs> the tension is mounting the tension, the tension is, is mounting, mounting. <sighs> where this is going is that we know how much people love chris's jingles and chris has been in jingle heaven haven't you you've been very busy here. so we have a one last thing jingle hopefully the sound will be shared this is a brief that that jane gave me so let's see did i do well are you going to tell them what the brief was well okay it was it was kind of musical power ballad wasn't it it was 1980s yeah, okay. inspired bit whitney houston go yes. go for okay. it chris take it away So our weapon all comes to its end And we know you have to go You only set aside an hour for this But there's one more gift we'd like to bestow One last thing Lunchtime's on its way back One last thing We stay around One last thing One last thing <laughs> It's a beautiful moment look at all, look at the lighters are all up Chris I, I created something magic there something uh, magic I, yes I think okay. the talents but, are wasted on jingles uh you think they're wasted on yeah. jingles well, well, I shouldn't I, be doing I, I mean I think I think really you know the, you, you you're destined for better things bigger well I see where you're segueing you're segueing greater you? things no the one last thing uh it's about um as many of you know, I work at the University of Kent. I will have worked at the University of Kent uh, 10 years this October. Um, I joined in 2012. I am actually moving on from the University of Kent. And as of the end of April, I will be taking up the post of copyright and licensing specialist at the Bodleian Libraries um, at the University of Oxford, working for Ruth Mallory, the fabulous Ruth. Um, now, is Ruth on the call today? Did she join? I don't think she is. I'm not sure she's she not. is. But... She's very, very busy. She's got lots of things to do. And that's why she's employing well, someone else. She's missing about a copyright copy. specialist. <laughs> um, so, uh, just wanted to let you all know that, I mean, this is, this is I think, going to continue to give me the opportunity to do this sort of thing and to work with everyone across the whole sector and raise the profile of copyright um, and, you know, put it into all those different areas we know, tricky questions, not straightforward answers. Um, I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be here in, and I'm going to stop sharing the screen. This is slightly not going to do that. I'm still going to be in Canterbury going to Oxford when necessary. So it's one of those kind of hybrid uh, remote and on-premise on, uh, on -premise type of arrangements. Uh, so yeah, interesting. It's fantastic times. news. So you've got lots of lovely messages there. I, I yeah. think at this moment you might need to just play that jingle again. I think this is this is the moment to just play it one one last time. One, if you one, could. one more we time. One last time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then if uh, anyone wants to come on and have a chat, then that would be lovely. We'll play it one last time, and then I will stop right. the recording after that, and people can have okay. a have a chat with you. But yes, it's super exciting and really hoping Chris that in this role you know you will provide real leadership for the sector we're wow. expecting great things or at least or at least some um cheesy novelty jingles at the very absolutely least. yes yes <laughs> to it.
listen and we know you have to go you only set aside enough for this but there's one more gift we'd like to bestow one last thing we know it's down the day Lunch time's on its way back One last thing Please stay well Please stay well One last thing One last thing Ah, that was lovely. Wasn't that great? Now people uh, feel free to leave. Uh, 